I want to bring you a message tonight entitled, uh, Kill the Dragon. Kill the Dragon. I think some of you guys were like, let's go. Let's kill the dragon. It's going to be a little metaphorical to begin with here, and then we're going to get, dive into the word really deep. But in Revelation chapter number 12, Revelation chapter number 12 and verse number 9. Revelation chapter 12 and verse number 9. This great dragon, the ancient serpent. <laughs> you can't tell me the Bible doesn't have the coolest stories in it. Come on, amen. This great dragon, the ancient serpent, called the devil or Satan. So it tells you who it is, okay? The one deceiving the whole world was thrown down to the earth with all of his angels, with all of his angels, okay? So I'm going to bring you back into the, some more of this scripture in just a moment, but I want you to see this, that, 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 that the enemy is referred to as a dragon. And I want you to understand that everyone in this place has to fight a three-headed uh, type dragon. You're going to have to fight three different tendencies in your life. They've been fought by men and women since the beginning of time. You see, our ancient foe is described here in this passage, this great dragon. This great what? Dragon. He's described as a dragon. But Revelation 12, 4 best describes his intentions for our lives. Just a few verses above, verse number 9, uh, Revelation 12, 4 says it this way. His tail swept away one-third of the stars in the sky, and he threw them to the earth. He stood in front of the woman, this is prophetic, but he stood in front of the woman as she was about to give birth. Many people believe this can be Israel with the coming of the Messiah. Different figurative things that are happening here, but I want you just to catch the, what's being described. It said the, the, the dragon stood in front of the woman as she was about to give birth. As she was about to do what? Give birth. Ready to do what? Devour her baby, watch this, as soon... My goodness, I just felt the preach hit me all of a sudden right there. As soon as her baby was born. See, this dragon is positioning itself in this, this, this we could talk about this in a few different ways of prophecy. It depends on what, what ways you read prophecy and all those things. But I want you to bring it into reality of your life right now. This ancient foe, Satan, is a dragon. And the dragon sets himself up in front of anyone who's trying to have something God-inspired birthed out of them. Are you with me? Yep. My goodness, I feel, I feel, I feel the Holy Spirit. I, I, I'm telling you. Because what happens is you come into this house... In this kind of atmosphere, in the anointing of God, you come to an altar and God births something inside of you and the very first thing that happens is the devil sets up waiting for that to begin to manifest in your life. Are you with me? Because he wants to devour the good work that God started inside of you. Oh, no, pastor, that would never happen. No, how many of you have ever left worshiping God and thought about where you're going to eat on the way home? My favorite thing to tell Christina on Sunday is, I don't care where it is as long as I don't have to stand up anymore. <laughs> Take me somewhere I can sit down. I've been standing since about 7.45 this morning. I want to sit down. But what happens is, God puts something inside of you. You get a word from God. I'm making sense to anybody. You get a word from God. And I've got a whole lot of sermon here, but I still feel the anointing right here for a moment. You get a word from God, and, and something you begin to believe, I can be better. You begin to believe, I can, I can walk free. You begin to believe, and let me tell you, the first thing you need to do is begin to believe. But the enemy immediately is going to come, and he's going to set up, and he's just waiting for you to begin to speak that. He's waiting for you to begin to live that. He's waiting for you to begin to try to walk in that freedom, because when you try to walk in that freedom, the thing he wants to do is cause a chaos in your world, a struggle in your family, a struggle in your life, and it'll cause you to want to go back and to kill that thing that God's birthed inside of you. Now, some of you know exactly what I'm talking about because you've been living there. You want to do better. 
You want to serve God. You want to move forward. And you're desperately crying out. But it seems like there's more days of loss than there are of victories. That's because the dragon has set himself up to devour what God's trying to do inside of you. Can I tell you, I've got a lot of sermon here, but I need to go ahead and tell you, the enemy may be setting himself up to devour what God's doing inside of you, but remember, greater is he that is in you than he that's in the world. Because when God puts it in you, God can finish the work. You just have to stay with God. You see, the enemy wants to stand in front of every good thing being birthed into your life, and he wants to devour it. You bear the image of God. And thus, we're born with a target on your back. The enemy is defeated for those who have the greater one in their lives. But that does not mean we should ignore his tactics. I'm going to teach you about this three-headed enemy, this three-headed dragon you have to deal with. The first way that you're going to have to deal with the enemy that tries to steal what God's birth... My goodness, I feel the Holy Spirit is birthing in you is you're going to have to deal with the dragon of doubt. The dragon... Of doubt you see the enemy breathes fire but we have the shield of faith you see we don't live by logic we live by faith let me say that again we don't live by logic we live by faith that you see a logic tells you don't keep going back to the barrel because it's, it's, it was empty yesterday but logic sent the widow back to the barrel I mean faith sent her back every day because there was always a little bit more and a little bit more to sustain your family logic would have told the woman you could only pour this much oil out of this little jar and it'll never fill any of those pots but faith made her keep pouring until the miracle came are you with me the enemy cannot quench you with the fire that he sends when there's faith in your life so he has to come and attack you and begin to get you to stop believing God for what's been declared over you. But, but, but pastor, what's been declared? I'll tell you what's been declared over you. That he that the Son sets free is free indeed. That you are more than a conqueror through Christ Jesus. That you are a blood-bought child of the living God and you are not who you used to be. You are a new creation in Christ. Am I making sense? That's been declared over you. But the devil wants to show up and make you start doubting that. No, 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 that's talking about somebody else. Or no, 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 that, that, that could never happen in my life. Or, or look at who I am. My reality's not matching up with what I believe. Don't you understand? If it matches up with what, what you see, it's not faith. Faith is what you can't see. And you're going to have to start seeing yourself well and seeing yourself. And I appreciate only one of you's really helping me preach tonight because if you really help me, we might have church here tonight. Sorry, I feel Jesus tonight. I don't, I'm not sorry I feel Jesus. I'm just sorry I look crazy up here. But you try to do it. <laughs> you see, you're going to have to stop playing the victim. And you're going to have to start being a conqueror. We defeat this dragon by not believing his lies. We must make sure the voice of the Holy Spirit is the loudest in our lives. See, this enemy's first trick is planting seeds of doubt. He started it, the dragon started it all the way back in the garden. Genesis chapter 3, I want you to see this. Genesis chapter 3, verse number 1. Then the serpent was the shrewdest, was the what? Shrewdest of all the wild animals the Lord God had made. And one day he asked the woman, watch this. Did God really say you must not eat from the fruit? Watch this, from any of the trees in the garden? Did God really say that? My goodness, I'm trying to stick to my notes. but I... Did God really say, if you confess your sins, he'll be faithful to forgive you of your sins? Let me just tell you, yes, he did. Did God, did, did anything really happen to you when you went to an altar? Did it, well, y'all got faith. Come on now, man. And the devil shows up. And he starts trying to sow doubt in your life. He, I'm just going to deal with, with these two groups for a while. He'll start telling, do you really think you'll survive outside of this environment? He starts putting doubt in your mind. Because if he can get you to doubt, he can begin to stop your faith. And if he can stop your faith, he can back you up. And he can devour what God's trying to birth. Don't you understand? God's called you to freedom. He's called you to deliverance. You see, you've got to understand, if you believe the lie of the devil, you're calling God a liar. 
One of them's lying. And the scripture says God's not a man that he should lie. And he doesn't change in his ways. Come on now, amen. He's constant and he's secure. And w- my goodness, I feel the Holy Spirit. Would you just give God a praise in this place for just a moment? See, doubt wants you to, to start doubting God, to get you to second guess what God has said. The enemy is a liar, but usually his lies, I want you to watch this, are half truths. How many of you have ever had to deal with some half truths? Did you break that? Well, <laughs> now the question is, did you do it? Well, and they come up with some creative way. I don't want to help anybody come up with a half truth, so I'm going to stop there. Listen to what the enemy said to Adam. Listen, I want you to get this. He exaggerates the, the restrictions. Watch this. He said, is it true that God won't let you eat from what you want? You see, I want you to catch this. He made his paradise sound like a prison. Go back to, go back to Genesis 3. One there. Jake, take it, take it back there for a moment. Watch what he said. Did God really say that you could, that you must not eat the fruit from what? Any. He only told him not to eat the fruit from one of the trees. See, the enemy wants to get you to looking at things in a wrong way. He wants you to start seeing what God's blessed you with as, as something that's holding you back. He wants to start, you to start seeing this new life as part of your problem. The enemy wants you to do the same about your marriage. He wants you to do the same about your job. I know a lot of people walked away from good opportunities because they had the wrong mindset. He wants you to do the same thing about your church. See, the enemy wants you to plant doubt in your life. And doubt is buying the enemy's lies and calling God a liar. So I wonder, is there a lie that you bought into? See, doubt tries to get you to doubt God's goodness. If we doubt his goodness, then we doubt his love, we doubt his power, and we doubt his grace. Because we say, well, I just don't know if God would do that for me. No, God's good. He has everything for your life that is planned for good. Oh, people will come. I'm, I, I, I didn't mean to go here, and, and, and I'm, I'm just so far off track uh, from where I thought we were going this sermon tonight, but I'm following God. I get so tired of people with something bad happens in your life. They go, well, it was just God's will. No, it wasn't. That's the devil. You get mad at God when you ought to be shaking your fist at the devil who caused the problem in the first place. Well, I wish God would, would not let this happen. No, God didn't do it. God was there to clean up your mess on the other side of what the devil caused or what you caused because you went down the wrong road. Maybe I just need to hurry. You see, many of us can't quite believe God loves us or that he could love us. Because if you knew how much my, I, I thought that was so powerful last week as we were talking about that. I was thinking about how, how different ones in this room think, well, you don't know what I've done. And I thought if I could, I would love to take a brand new newbie in God's house and to some of these old saints and, and them me thinking, you don't know how bad I am. And I'm sitting there looking, this person is much better than you ever thought you were. But they're, they're, they're a saint. They're a church going person. Now you don't understand when they walked through the door, they were scary. I'm telling you, they're the type of people you went, whoop, come on by. But something changed because they believed the truth. And the truth set them free. See, the truth is is what God wants you to, to understand. That God's truth is God loves you enough. Watch this. He wants to spend eternity with you. Some of you love your family, but you're thankful Thanksgiving only comes one time a year. Come on, amen. But God says, I want to spend forever with you. (laughs) That's love. He loves us. When doubt came to devour Christ's future, what did he do? He resisted the doubt by dropping truth bombs from the Scripture. If you want to beat doubt, you have to sharpen your sword of truth. Watch how the enemy works. He said that quote, he said, you must not eat from any tree in the garden. But that isn't what God said. There was only that one forbidden tree. The enemy tries to make obedience, watch this, he tries to make obedience seem harder than it really is. People tell me, I just want to live a little while before I serve God. How much living is it 
when you've got to give half your money every month to the probation officer. Come on now. How much living is it when you're wondering where you were last night and who you were with last night? How much living is it when, when you're worried somebody's going to catch up to your lie and everything's going to be exposed and going to fall apart? That's not living. Matter of fact, Christian was with me on that trip. We were walking through those uh, Carpathian Mountains, beautiful stuff all around. And, and, and I, well, Christian and I were talking about where God's brought him to in his life. And I leaned over to him and I said, son, I, I know you thought you had to live a little while before you served God, but this is living. I said, we're walking places that, that our ancestors never dreamed anybody from their line would walk. We're seeing beauty that, that, that we, we, we can barely uh, 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 understand in that area. And I said, son, this is living. You see, the devil said, oh, no, 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 no. God, God made it hard. You can't eat from anything. No, God just said don't eat that one thing. God never told you you couldn't be happy. Matter of fact, he's your only key to happiness. He's the only way you're going to get there. Am I preaching truth? Yes. Good, because i got a whole lot more of it and we're running out of time. <laughs> Come on now. You see, resisting temptation isn't easy. But you can win. You can win this battle. You see, I believe the problem that most of us have and the reason we feel defeated is because we believe the lie of the devil that we'll never win. We believe the lie of the devil that when we fail again, that we're never going to stop failing. You know what I love? I'm going to teach you two quick things here, and, and I think I'm going to save the other two. I've got another week's sermon already done. Come on, amen. The other two dragons for later. But I want you to get this. When you fail... And when you struggle, and you finally come to that place, you start believing who you are in Christ. Can I tell you that this will not help you get free from your sin? Right here. God, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. You're just declaring something about what you did. What you need to learn to do is this. Father, I repent, and I'm not going to be that person anymore. And now, by faith in Jesus Christ, I declare what your word says about me. I am a child of God. I have been bought with a high price of Jesus Christ. I will overcome. Come on now, are you, are you with me? But Pastor, you're saying, Pastor, I don't know if I can believe that. Well, some of you need to... St- Come on. Come on. There you go. Have you ever met a real liar? <laughs> that... They'll lie till they believe their own lie, and then they'll die defending that lie. Come on now. <laughs> Am I telling the truth? Yeah. Before long, they don't even know what the truth is. But let me just tell you, if you'll, believe, if you'll quote a lie until it becomes a belief in your system, why don't you begin to quote the truth until it becomes a belief in your life? Why don't you begin to declare who God says you are? Why don't you begin to pay? But, but, but you don't understand what I've done. No, 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 no. I'm not worried about what you've done. I'm worried about where you are right now. What, where are you now? What are you declaring over your life now? If all you're declaring is, oh, look what I did, look what I did, look what I did. No, you've got to take what you did to the altar of Jesus Christ. You've got to lay it down at the altar. You need to get up and declare you're different now. And watch this, before, before long, you'll start transforming into who you're declaring that you are. You see, they told you you'd be worthless, so you became worthless to everybody but God. But God has told you you're worth it all. Yes. Worth the high price of Jesus Christ dying on a cross for you. So when you begin to declare that, I'm messed up. Well, yeah, you messed up, but I'm not messed up anymore. I just messed up. Do you understand the difference? I'm not messed up anymore. I just messed up because now I've been cleaned up by the blood of Jesus Christ. I'm trying to show you. It doesn't have, some of you just think everything about God's got to be King James. (laughs) Am I making sense to anybody tonight? (laughs) Because I'm preaching a totally different sermon than I planned, and I don't even know if we're going to broadcast this or not. But... Some of you think it's got to be, oh, living God who art in heaven. (laughs) Sometimes you just need to go, God, I don't even know what to say. But God, I want to be better. I want to be what you want me to be. 
my favorite prayer that I've ever heard prayed for salvation. I've told you this before, but a friend of mine by the name of Chad Varga prayed it this way. He said this. He said, Jesus, help me. He said, I can't tell you why I didn't have to say I confess this and I confess that. He said, all I can tell you is that God changed my situation in a moment. You've got to start declaring who you are. And the other thing is this. Watch this. As you begin to walk in who you are becoming, watch this. You're going to find out that what used to stop you every day in defeat, before long, you're going to go, wow, it's been a while. It's, I hadn't done that in a while. Can I tell you what that comment is? Are you ready for this? Ready for This is noteworthy. That is a warning light that, make, that you need to hear screaming. Because the moment you say, whoop, I got that beat, can I tell you, his big ugly brother is going to show up and beat the tar out of you. Can we say that in Dawsonville? Can we say it like that? His big ugly brother is going to come around the corner and say, you thought you had my little brother beat, now you've got to deal with me. And you know what? I've learned it time and time again in my life. At that moment, I have a decision. I'll either fall back or I'll stand up. And it might be a battle. I went out on a fishing boat one time. My dad loves to tell this story. I don't know why we went out on a fishing boat, but this fishing boat, we went out on to catch some fish with some of the men of this church. We had paid good money for this boat, and they said the seas might get a little rough. They did not tell us it was going to be the start of a hurricane. <laughs> I want you to know, I turned as green as some of your shirts. I threw up until I thought my toes were going to come out my nose. I held on to the boat so I could relieve myself over the boat. As it was trying to wash me out, I'm bruised, I'm bloody. Come on now. <laughs> but I held on because I'm going to weather the storm. I, one of my favorite parts of that story is because the devil showed up. The devil showed up. He said to me, where's your faith now? I said, what do you mean? I heard it just as real as I've heard anything. He said, well, where's your Jesus said, you do greater things than he did. Why don't you just calm this water? And it was like God just put the answer right in my mouth. I said, if I calm this water, this crazy captain's going to want to stay out here on this water. <laughs> Come on. So I'm going back to shore, and I prayed a prayer that day. I said, God, if you will deliver me, I will never go deep sea fishing again in my life. <laughs> I kissed the dock when I got back on. But I tell you that because I want you to get that picture in your mind. I'm holding on. I'm sick. I'm beat up. I'm bloody. I just want to die. Literally. I was praying more Jesus take me home right that moment than ever before in my life. It was awful. Sometimes when you fight that next level, it's going to hurt. But if you just hold on, you're going to come through. Amen. Calm land is just ahead. But you've got to make up your mind that the God who delivered you from the little brothers can deliver you from the big brother. And because he not only can deliver you from that, he's going to deliver you from the next struggle and the next struggle. And can I tell you, there's always going to be a battle because where there's not a battle, you can't ever walk in victory. See, so you weren't called to be pacifists. You were called to be conquerors. And you can't, you can't conquer if you don't have something to conquer. But if you'll kill that thought of doubt and realize, all right, first off, I'm going to believe God. I'm going to close with this. Secondly, I'm not going to look at it in the wrong way. I'm going to get God's mind on this. The devil was like, you can't do anything you want to do in this garden. No, you just can't eat of that one thing. All right? I'm going to find what God wants. And then finally, I'm going to be consistent. Even when I fail, it does not mean he has failed. I'm going to get up, and I'm going to go on. Is God speaking to anybody tonight? See, somebody came here, and you've been failing more than you've been winning. But God sent you here for freedom tonight. God sent you here for deliverance tonight. Why don't you go talk to that guy right over there? He'll, he'll help you pray over it right over there. 
Well, he, you're going to have to talk to him first, right over there, if you would, okay? All right, well, guys, would you help him tonight? And, um, and so. They're going, hey, they're going to help you pray for just a minute. And, uh, well, we have, a, we have a little order in our house here, and you're going to have to talk with them first, okay? All right. Why don't you stand with me in this place? You see, God's trying to speak to your hearts tonight. And God wants you to hear what He is saying to you. I want you to bow your heads if you would in this place. And God is speaking to somebody who's failed. God's speaking to somebody who's struggled. God's speaking to somebody who's failed more than you have won lately. And we're not going to let anything distract from what God's Spirit's been doing in this place. And if your head's bowed and your eyes are closed, I want you to listen to me carefully. How many of you would say with me, I failed more than I've won, but I want to win? Can I see your hand if that's you? Wow. The majority of the people in this room put those down. Living God, right now, right now, you see every need. Every person. Can I tell you, I don't know who you are, but maybe you struggle with coming here tonight. Maybe you struggled with, 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 with being, uh, 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 your day changed or whatever. I don't know what it is, but, but God brought you into this place to hear this word. That he's not through with you yet. You just need to start believing that he's moving you forward. I, I, I know this is going to sound even crazier, but, but I need to know, who, who is that I'm talking to right now? Yeah, several of you. All right. God, hmm, I need to declare something else. Some of you where you don't want to be right now, but God's got you right where you're supposed to be. So he can do in you what you need to have done so you can go and become what he's called you to be. Father, I thank you for your presence. I thank you for your spirit. And we're going to pray for one other thing before I pray the final prayer. With everybody praying. If you're here tonight and you say, Pastor Donna, I never really believed that God could love me. Because I don't love me. I don't really love who I am, and I never really believed that God could love me, but tonight I want, to, I want to know the love of God. I want to know the presence of God. If that's you, if I've not embarrassed anybody else that's raised their hand, and I'm not going to embarrass you. Can I see your hand right where you are? Yeah. Hands all over this place. Put those down. All right, tonight you're going to come to know the love of Jesus. Join hands with someone near you. We're going to pray the prayer of faith. And the love of God is going to be manifest in their life. And then I'm going to pray for everyone else who responded. Pray this with me. Jesus, Jesus. by faith, by faith. I, believe I believe your promises. Your promises. Heavenly, Father, Heavenly Father, I believe, I believe. In, Jesus in Jesus' name, as I repent of my sins, I, of my sins. I, am, forgiven. I am forgiven. I receive, I receive. your grace your love, and your forgiveness. And from this moment forward, this truth I believe. God is my Father. Heaven is my home. And Jesus is my Savior. Heavenly Father, now as they prayed this prayer, I thank you that your word declares by faith that they're being sealed by the Holy Spirit. That a change is happening in them that is not natural but is spiritual. That it's not earthly but it's heavenly. And Lord, I, whoo, my goodness, this is, I, I just feel God tonight. The doubt that just showed up to somebody who just prayed that prayer, that's the devil. You need to confess this word of God that if I confess, he is faithful to forgive. If I confess, he is faithful. See, that's truth. The enemy says God can't love you. God says for God to love the world that he gave his own. He's already done. He's already loved you. That while you were dead in your sins, see, I'm just quoting the scripture. He did that for you. Father, thank you for your presence. Thank you for your spirit. 
But most of all, thank you, Lord, that you're helping everyone here that has failed begin to step forward because this demon of doubt, this dragon of doubt, we're going to slay him in the name of Jesus Christ. Can I get an amen in this place tonight? Give God a praise. Amen.